All right, well, I have the pleasure this evening to um, do the introduction for the keynote, this evening's keynote speaker. It is Dr. Mr. Reverend Robert Shannon. Reverend Robert Shannon was a former pastor of Greater Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Lake Placid, Florida, for 16 years. So, for our keynote speaker, Reverend Robert Shannon. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening again. Well, on the program, we are logging in 30 minutes, but I did prepare, but for 10 minutes. But they said 10 minutes. And when they said 10 minutes, you know, preachers and pastors usually have three closings. So they said the first closing should come in five minutes, the second closing should come in seven minutes, and I should be closing in 10 minutes. Is that all right? Well, we just certainly want to thank the HPNG board, the administrative support, and especially Ms. Wilson, who uh, is the uh, coordinator of this great day of event this year. And I wish you would just, with me, just applaud that group. They're doing a wonderful job. Protocol has been established. All the dignitary terrorists have been recognized. And this is a lovely event. Can you do something for me? Look at the person next to you in the left eye and say, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> in the left eye now, you have to look in the left eye. In the left eye. All right, okay. <laughs> All right. But I just want to um, say to my lovely wife, Gwendolyn and Shannon for 33 years. She has been with me, and I just love her so much. She supports everything I do. Can you clap your hand for her? Yeah. Yeah. They say besides every man, there's a woman far greater. Can you say amen? Yeah. And that's the far greater part of me. Yeah. Community involvement, working together, we are building a great community. Andrew Carney, an American industrialist and philanthropist said, take away my people, but leave my factories, and soon grass will grow on the factory floors. Take away my factories, but leave my people, and soon we will have new and better factories. Andrew Carney recognized that we can spur that the people in the community involved in working together are the driving force for change. The people, the fundamental foundation for growth and development. It's the people that interacts, that discuss and exchange ideas, providing information that produce guidance and direction. It's the people that intercepts thoughts that are detrimental to the mission of any community. It's the people that intervene by protecting the interests of the expected destiny. It's the people that interrupt, that shoulders anything that hinders and breaks the cohesiveness of the community. The Highway Park Board, the members of the Highway Park Beautification Mission, and the residents of Highway Park are excited that the HPNG, which is sanctioned by the Highlands County Board of Commissioners, and a recognized 501 C3 organization, I laid that each of you came out to support this festive occasion. They are enthusiastic that the mission to restore, preserve Highway Park through advocacy, beautification, education, health, senior citizen and children's programs, arts and cultural programs that enhance the quality of every citizen while serving as a catalyst for the betterment of the community is active and producing change. You can clap for that. It's producing change. This historical community, with its rich history of past settlers and contemporary trailblazers, was created almost a century ago. A community that was excited to have a place to call home where families and friends in the spirit of unity, could assist each other 
in achieving and accomplishing their dreams. A community where an atmosphere for building and sustaining relationships are cultivated in all citizens. A community where integrity is the core value that prompts and propels its members to pursue with a spirit of excellence the desired outcome. A community that refuses to capitulate, stop fighting, stop trying, never surrendering anything that will affect, first of all, the psychological aspect of the community, and that which shapes and develops the faculty of reason, emotion, and perception as it pertains to the environment. During the stage, risk-taking and making decisions without all information may be called upon. This community functions and operates because they are working together, being involved to build this community. They are working in the sociological aspect that which relates to establishing a culture, climate, with an internal means of assessing and implementing the necessary changes to produce a healthy and vibrant community. In this stage, diverse people are working together in unison to accomplish specific goals. The psychological or the physiological, that which is connected to the citizens, residents, families, friends, and infrastructure, which hinders, impedes, orchestrates, and stymies the community. This community has come together with a loud, clarion call, saying we will work together in our community to bring about the expected intention that God has placed in our hearts. As a community, we will be involved and work together to guarantee that we are building a great community by ensuring that the psychological, the sociological, and the physiological well-being of the community is sound, firm, and stable. A great writer stated that vision without action is only a dream. Action without vision just passes the time. However, action with vision can change the world. A community involved in working together is action with vision that edifies and builds. It's encouraging and it's employing all to activate their gifts of compassion and creativity for the betterment of the community. One of my instructors, Dr. Evelyn Plumas, a lead facilitator in organization and community development, stated to achieve the core mission effectively requires attention to both the formal and informal culture of a community as you continue with your core mission, which is the framework for behavior and influences why and what you do as well as how you do it. It will shape and orchestrate what you value, what you lead, how you think, feel, act, and contribute to the community. This leads to strategic culture, which is a mission-driven and people-centered. This strategy is building trust and leadership inside out by embedding vision and principles that influence what is consistently valued. She taught us about the Kaizen approach, which is a Japanese word that means gradual, never-ending improvements, doing little things better, setting and achieving higher standards day by day. To do this, there are six basic principles we must follow. One is we must continue to communicate. That is the ability to convey and transmit thoughts and ideas to others that shape and mold and fashion the minds and the hearts of the people. Think of what Lee Cole said, you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get them across, your ideas won't get you anywhere. Second is creativity. The Hebrew word, bara, is where God stood out and spoke and said, let there be, and there was created everything. In every one of us, there's borrow. There's creatorial ability inside of us. And all we have to do 
is speak in our environment. And when we speak into our environment, our environment must take shape because we're working together, being involved to build our community. There must be co collaboration. And you can see around the room, there's great collaboration. That is the ability to take the mission of the community and allow each agency in the partnership to provide the necessary resources to accomplish the ultimate intention. And then you have to have courage, the boldness, the confidence to function and operate in spite of opposition. You're always going to have 7% that say you can't. But when you have courage, you say, I can. And then you must be consistent. That is to maintain focus through the progressive stages of growth and development. And lastly, have a commitment. And that commitment is having a willingness, readiness, and fully persuaded mindset to stay involved in the process until completion. When that happens, clarity of purpose is set before you. You resolve within your mind, we can do it. It puts a position that is, you are fixed in place in relationship to rest. You don't, allow, you don't allow the noise outside of you to disrupt you or to interrupt the very thought of the work that you are doing that causes restoration. Because now, because you're working, you're involved, you can drive away danger. You can put to stop anyone that want to stop building the community because you have power or you're empowered. That means you have ability you have might, you have vigor, you have the very force to move forward what God has placed in your heart. And with that, you can issue a proclamation. You can say without a doubt in your mind, it's more than decreeing and declaring. What it is is demonstration and manifestation. I'm tired of people just decreeing and declaring and not working. We gotta work. Because it's your presence. And with your presence, you have a new perception. That is, you have insight. You have wisdom. You are able to see what God has placed in your heart. And that's refreshing. It's rejuvenating. It's resuscitating. It revives you. In conclusion, Dr. Cyrus, and I think that's my third conclusion, <laughs> In conclusion, Dr. Cyrus S. Flanagan stated that spiritual leadership, social leadership, civic leadership, any type of leadership has everything to do with leaving an indelible mark upon all you come in contact with. Leaders has extraordinary ability to see what is not visible to the normal person. Leaders are chosen because something is missing and because something is happening that needs to be corrected. If you ever had a root canal and had that tooth replaced, they call that an implant. And an implant is very important because the tooth in front of it and the tooth behind it never argues on debate because you have an implant. And when you are working, you need to fit in place. And don't worry about who's ahead of you or who's behind you. Just be what God has called you to be. And what it does. What it does is bring stability. You were chosen, members of Highway Park, residents, all of us were gathered to support that great community because something was missing in your community and you were placed there to fix it and to add and not to add to the existing problem. You were placed there because you're prolonging life. God had chosen and placed you in different areas, places, positions, with assorted skills and abilities and experiences prolong the lives of those that he delegated you to. You've got to have that communication. You're expected to have a greater communication, clear goals, proven results to those in those neglected areas. 
to call you, calls you out to preserve. You are responsible to save, preserve, to keep in place the good things that is building the community. There are people, future, lives, minds, destiny. You are implanted in that community to save it. You are mavericks. You were chosen because you were different. You were born with special skills to handle the storm and the crisis to be constant no matter how the pressure confronts you. Dwight D. Eisenhower stated, motivation is the art of getting people to do what you want them to do because they want to do it. The good news is the bad news will no longer obey the spirit where we live. And finally, Winston Churchill says, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Let us continue to work in our community, being involved, and we will build a community. Thank you very much.